Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. So today we are going to be focusing on um, mixing colors and specifically we're going to be looking at mixing neutrals, browns and grays. Um, I got a couple of questions about this earlier, how to make some certain types of browns and grays. Um, and so I want to go over that with you. This is a great time of year. A lot of folks may have brand new watercolor supplies that are new to them, brand maybe brand new to watercolor altogether, or you might have maybe some gift certificate money um, and you're looking to upgrade your supplies. Um, so maybe you wanna get some higher level watercolors. Um, you're going from either um, craft supply to student grade or student grade to professional grade paints and you want to make sure you, you're getting your money's worth. You don't have enough to buy a whole large set, but just a few colors. So we're gonna talk about that today. So first I'm going to introduce what I'm using. So here we are, I'm gonna set out a brand new little palette here on my ceramic plate for you. So if I had to choose forever to only use four colors, or three colors really, but four colors, um, these are the ones I would use. So I'm using my core paints I'll and one Cotman color because I don't have black in core, um, but I'm using my core paints. These colors can almost always be found in pretty much any brand. Um, so the three colors that I am focusing on are Thalo Blue. This is a Dyrolide Yellow, but New Gamboge Yellow or Gambo's yellow would work just as well. So Dyrolide yellow, it's a warm yellow color. And then Quinacridone magenta. So any magenta, Quinacridone magenta is my favorite. And then last but not least, I threw in a black and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but we can do most everything with these three colors, but a lot of people like to have black on hand. I primarily use Payne's gray in place of my black. I do have black, obviously, um, but in my palette that I use every day, I have Payne's gray instead of black. So that is dealer's choice for you. Um, okay, so let's talk about these three colors. Let's get them out on our palette. So a set that I would highly recommend um, when you're first learning watercolors, if you don't want to buy just um, loose tubes and you want to buy a little set of tubes, uh, I recommend Daniel Smith's watercolor essential set. This is a great set. It comes with six paints. Daniel Smith is a higher end uh, professional grade paint um, with very good light fast ratings for these colors. Um, and it comes with two yellows, two reds, and two blues. So those are your primary colors. And the reason it comes with two of each is because you have a warm and a cool version of your yellow, a warm and a cool version of your red, and a warm and a cool version of your blue. I'm not gonna get into all that today, but if you wanna see the video where I go over this whole set and why it's important to have um, a cool and a warm version and what they can do for you of each of your primary colors, you can go check out that video here. I'll put a link to it right here. Um, but today we're gonna focus on these three colors. I have the Thalo Blue, the Dyrolide Yellow, Gamboge Yellow would work great, and then also a Quinacridone Magenta. And these are all core paints. So these are my three primary colors, and we're going to make start out by making brown today. So if you only have these three colors and maybe a black, I'm gonna throw black on here for good measure. Um, Hopefully this black isn't dried out. Nope, okay, good. Uh, I'm using a lamp black. If you had only these three colors, how would you make neutrals or browns? And it's really quite easy in that you mix them all together. Now, the ratio in which you choose to mix them together will change the, um, the type of brown you get or the type of gray you get. So let's first start out by making browns because this was the question I got, how to replace like Van Dyke brown. What could you replace it with? Well, if you have a red, a yellow, and a blue, you can definitely make versions of that color. Um, so the first thing I always do when making brown, I have a little reflection on my plate here. Sorry about that. Let's move. Oh, oh, oh. So the first thing I do is make orange. Um, so I'm gonna take some of my magenta, rinse out my brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow, actually probably a lot of bit of my yellow, mix it in so I get this bright, bright orange here, okay? I'm gonna have to add more magenta and yellow in a moment, I know it, but 
then I'm going to start taking a little bit of blue. Now, phthalo blue is a strong blue. And I'm just gonna start to mix it in and you can see how it starts to neutralize and bring this to a brown color. You only need a little blue and you just keep adding until you're satisfied with your brown. So this is a very nice reddish brown color. Beautiful. And then you can keep adding blue to keep neutralizing and it's gonna start to get darker and grayer in tone. It's gonna start to take the red out of it. Isn't that cool? That's great. So just keep adding until you're satisfied. And you can go the other way too if you want a really, really red or orangish brown. And we're just gonna keep going. Look at that. And then we're approaching gray now. It still has a brown tendency to it, but it's really gray. And if you want to, so now we're going leaning on the green gray side. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit more blue and then we're gonna start to swing in another direction. So this is a very greenish blue gray, a very cool gray. We've added lots of blue to it. Now we're gonna start to swing towards a more neutral gray. So this has a lot of um, bluish green to it. So if we wanna start swinging more towards a neutral gray, we're gonna start to add magenta. And that's going to purple us out a little bit. So now we're at a pretty neutral gray. This is very neutral. And then if I keep going and keep swinging towards magenta, we're gonna get a redder, more purpley gray color. And then you can start swinging back in the other way, start to add a little yellow to it. And now we're swinging back towards brown. We're gonna get a very yellowish brown color. Isn't that cool? So we've made all of these different neutral tones just with these three colors. And I think it's quite amazing. I love color mixing. I think it's magic. I think that the more you practice by limiting your palette, the better you will get, even with a complex palette, such as the one I use. So I use um, a pretty complex palette, not super. I don't have like 120 colors or anything like some folks have, or even like 84 or 64. You know, you, those really big palettes are really enticing. I have, and you can see which colors I use the most. Some of my convenience colors, like this teal here, um, this particular orange over here, this um, green gold, these are like interesting colors that are harder to mix. I really don't use them that often. They don't have these little holes in them, but now you can see like the colors that have big holes in them, my magenta, my reds, my phthalo blue have big holes in them because I use them all the time because I mix a lot of my own colors on my palette. So even if you have a more complex palette, the more you learn color mixing, the more you'll be able to manipulate even your um, your convenience colors. So you could start out with this cobalt blue and understand how to manipulate it into another um, version of itself by adding different colors. So color mixing is highly, highly recommended. So look at all these beautiful neutrals. Ah, oh, I love them. Okay, so let's talk about the black. So I added black on here. Most people have black in their palette. You certainly could water down your black to get a grayish color. You're going to get a very boring gray and you're only going to have one version of gray. So, and you can change the, 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 um, the, not the tone of it. Nope. The value of it by making it darker and lighter, but it's going to have the same tone to it. It's always going to be this blackish gray color. You're not going to be able to make all of these different versions of grays with just black. So a lot of people use black as a crutch for gray, which is fine when you're starting out, but learning to mix your grays will make your paintings more dynamic. What you can do with black, once you have, so let's go back to that brown. And we're gonna add a lot of pigment. And go back up to brown. Let's make this really deep orange. The more pigment you add, the more paint you add to less water, The more saturated the color will be. Oh, see? So this blue is really strong and I accidentally picked up way too much. So now I have this really deep, 
beautiful navy color. There you go. So you can see I get this gorgeous rich navy color, but not really brown, not the color I wanted. So let's, let's bring it back the other way. All you have to do is start swinging by adding these other colors. So now I have purple, the opposite of purple on the color wheel. Again, watch that other color mixing video. We talk all about the color wheel is yellow. And when you add yellow, it starts to neutralize. So even if you mess up and you swing too far in one direction and all of a sudden you have a whole bunch of blue or this navy color, it is not lost. Don't wipe your palette off and start over. Just add some more colors or take a little section of it and then start with that. All right, so we have this brown color. We could go a little redder, magenta and a little more yellow. All right, so there, I'm happy with that, this reddish brown color, but I really wanna deepen it, um, but I don't want to cool it down too much with the blue. I don't wanna bring it towards gray too far, but I do wanna cool it down a little bit. I can use black for that, um, and you can get this deeper, richer, uh, more of a raw umber kind of color. So I do like black for that to add to my already existing browns to deepen the colors, but I really like to mix the brown first and then just add a little bit of black to kind of deepen it. So that is your introduction to making browns. Now look at all of these beautiful colors and you could keep going. You can make a whole range of beautiful, more neutral gray purples, a whole range of beautiful neutral gray navies and blues. Um, that aren't the full pop of your saturated color. And this palette can be so gorgeous for so many things. So thank you for watching and go check out those other color mixing videos. And I will definitely do some more color mixing tutorials on how to get the most out of simple color palettes and limited color palettes. Thanks everyone, take care. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment if you have more questions about other colors you're interested in mixing um, and the best way to get those. And um, share this with someone else who might want to also learn about color mixing. All right, y'all. Have a great rest of your day and happy painting.